You must understand the progressive revelations of God. Somebody will be hearing me now say, well, what do you mean? Is it not Jesus himself that say, ask for daily bread and he will give you? But there, you will keep asking for daily bread. It's the same God that invited us. He said, ask of the hidden, I will give to you. And the uttermost part of the earth, I will give you for your possession. So it depends on where you want to operate from. The man who asks for the nations does not need to ask for daily bread. The requirements of daily bread is included there. But the one who asks for daily bread cannot take the nations. The nations will be far. I heard Pastor Chris speaking the other day and he said, he didn't know that the globe was so small. Hi. I shook my head. I said, what do you mean? Is it Australia you are talking about or Canada? They are distant places. They, where they are operating now, eh? they put the map of the world. Rhapsody will go to Australia. Rhapsody will go here. They just stick. When you see the map of the world, you see dots. Those dots are nations that they have conquered. So in their own scale now, nations are dots. Meanwhile, you, you are seeing Nigeria. It's big. You are inside Nigeria looking for how to conquer Abuja. Some people have entered where nations are what? Dots. So when you see dot is Canada, you see dot is Nigeria, you see dot is Ghana, you see dot is Zang, that's where to operate from. See, I prophesy over you. Receive capacity enlargement in the name of Jesus. Jesus told us, go into all the worlds. And there were four worlds for worlds. The first word for world is Matthew 28, 19. It means your aeon, sphere of influence. So it could be among your friends, it could be among your family, but that's not where he stopped. He now went further. He now used another word for words. And that word is in Matthew 24, 14. The word is oikomen. You know what it means? Empires and systems. So when you finish with your family, go to the mountains of influence. And then he now used another word for words. Mark 16, 15 is the word cosmos. That's the whole earth. So you may begin with family, you may begin with friends, but the time will come when you go to established institution, and the time will come when you go to the whole earth. And then the last one is the word age. See, Galatians 1 verse 3, it means the whole generation. What, what do you know about your God? This thing is not about you. It's about your revelation of the magnitude of your God. That's why we teach it. So when you see people making impact, there are things they dare because they know who their God is. And some of you are more anointed than those making impact that are greater than yours. But they know something about God that you don't know. That's why you can find a prophet raising the dead. He's still in one village. And another one does not even know anything about raising the dead. But he's addressing the nations. It's something he knows about his God. Because you become as big as your revelation of your God. And this is not about church. Even your businesses. What will move you from a kiosk to a supermarket to a brand that is global is your revelation of your God. Because that revelation is what will sponsor the outcome of your life. So we are not teaching this to keep you in a theological class. We are teaching this to open up your faith. To open up your potentials. See, your God is big. And he invited you to ask. And he told you to ask Whatever. Men who will build systems, we arise from here. Men who will take over nations, we arise from here. I decree and declare, receive capacity enlargement in the name of Jesus. Immutability of God means God cannot change. And God is unchanged. That means he has never changed and there's nothing that can change him. This is why you can believe God with your life. If God tells you now, on the last day, I will raise you from the dead. Even the day you are dying, you will die with joy. Because you know that he won't change his mind. If God looks at you and tells you, I have blessed you. Even if you are walking through poverty, you will be going with thanksgiving. If God looks at you and tells you, you will have children. Even if 10 doctors tell you that your womb is dead and that you are impotent, you will tell them that's not what God said. I will rather believe God. Let God be true and all men liars. But the people who can believe God are those who know God is immutable. So there's no day you will come and say, did he change his mind? Did something happen? There's nothing that can happen. He can never change his mind. As surely as he liveth, it will come to pass. He is the reason for his own existence. He does not exist for anyone, 
neither does his existence depend on anyone if god is not around today you are finished but if not if you are not around god remains so in exodus 3 14 he said say to them i am that i am have sent you that's the self-existent one i am existence i exist for myself everything exists because of me i don't exist because of anyone have you seen people be god before who are angry and are telling god if you are there why are you not doing this so they get angry they say if god is why is there evil they think god is existing for them god is not existing for you you are the one existing for god that's why if you are wise you are lying to him they tell themselves i don't care about god if god exists why am i going through this circumstance if you are wise better find out what he says to do come out of it otherwise you'll be in that circumstance you will die and you will discover that he is he doesn't exist for you you exist for him if you know it you will cooperate with him quickly when job was going through crisis a point came job became tired and job started questioning god when god showed up he looked at him he said who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge your words doesn't have knowledge you are not here because of you you are here because of me and if you know this no matter the circumstance you are going through you will lift up your hand and say holy is your name because it's by praising him that you will come out and in case you don't come you don't come out he is the god the hebrew boy said we will not be careful to answer you in this matter our god can save us but in case he doesn't save us we will not bow that means we know his existence and his significance in our lives beyond everything we are going through god is self-existent that's why you can't coerce God to do what he didn't plan to do. So when we believe in the barrier of Jesus, there is a power to separate us from the world. So when you find Christians who still love the world, who function like enemies of God, is because they have not understood the barrier of Jesus. The day you understand the barrier of Jesus, the power to be separated from the world comes upon your life. You will now discover that that taste you have for alcohol will die. And that law begins to work the moment you understand that Jesus has been buried. And then you have the resurrection. It is in the resurrection that the life of Jesus is credited into you. So I'm not living now primarily by the human life. I'm living now by the life of God. But I came into the ecosystem of that life when I believed that Jesus rose from the dead. So while his death dealt with the flesh and sin, his burial separates you from the world and the resurrection brings you into the economy of the life of God. So now you can live like God on the face of the earth. Because you now have the DNA of God. You now have the nature of God. You now have the same life that powers God. So you can function like God on the face of the earth. And I said, as touching our salvation, primarily speaking, it is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus that sponsors it. But now that we have been saved and we are living by the resurrected life of Christ, we can now model the sinless life of Jesus. Because if Jesus didn't live sinlessly, we won't have a pattern to copy. But now that he has lived sinlessly and we have his life and his nature, we can now copy him. We can now model him. So everything Jesus did while he walked on the earth, we can now do because we have the newness of life in the resurrection. But I said it doesn't stop there. There are three other things. And I said the next three category is his ascension. And I said it's in his ascension that you were enabled to represent him. Why his resurrection enables you to live like him, his ascension enables you to represent him. So everything we call ministry today and representing God with power and authority and dominion is sponsored by the ascension. Because Ephesians chapter 4 verse 8 says, Him that descended is the same that ascended. And he said when he ascended, he gave gifts to men. He said to some, he gave to the apostles. He didn't give gifts when he resurrected. He gave life when he resurrected. But he gave gifts when he ascended. To some, he gave to be prophets. To some, he gave to be evangelists. To some, he gave to be pastors and teachers. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. You see many people today who are serving God. And they come up with consciousness that limits them. What are those consciousness? Nobody from my father's house have succeeded. And then you see a prophet or a pastor all his life is talking about foundations. He can't succeed in ministry. He can't succeed in business. When you say Jack, he says foundation. And he has gone to more than seven deliverance centers. A still foundation. What he has not understood is the ascension. You receive your calling not from your father's house. You receive your calling from far above principalities and powers. You receive your calling far above every name that is named. Whether in this world or in the world that is to come. I'm telling you. See, even though 
those who deliver people from foundation, what do they use? I'm not saying these things don't exist. I understand it and I understand it well. There is what we call spiritual foundation and there's what we call spiritual patterns. A spiritual foundation or a spiritual covenant are legalities that bind on unbelievers because they are in their sins and under the government of the devil. If I'm not born again and my father was a criminal, the impact will affect me. If I'm not born again and my people worship idols, the impact will affect me because there is a legality. Number one, I'm under the government of darkness. Number two, I don't have the power to fight them even if I wanted to. But the moment I become born again, the old man died on the cross. So there's nobody to accuse. You can't accuse. The guy died on the cross. So the person you are dealing with now is not the old man. The Bible says whoever is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold. The key word there is behold. That means you become aware that all things are now new. If you don't become aware, you'll be in trouble. That's why many people have problems. The day you become aware that all things have become new. No devil from anywhere can afflict you. No cause from anywhere can rest upon you. That is where foundations are destroyed. However, there's what we call patterns. What are patterns? Patterns are forces that demons, having studied people's bloodline, know that they are weak to because of their soulish design. So when you go through certain family, because of the way they think and process things, they love immorality. They love alcoholism. They love lying. It's just part of their soulish operation. Now, when a man is born again, foundations are destroyed. The devil knows he no longer has any legality. Because the Bible said, God nailed every handwriting of ordinance that was against you to the cross. The devil now knows there's no legality. So the devil comes into your soul. He knows your mind is not renewed. The devil knows you are not aware of who you are in Christ. So what does the devil do? He begins to tempt you. And what he does is that the things that your mind processes, you can sit down. The things that your mind processes, the things that your mind loves to do that are against God, he begins to lure you to do it. And Paul was speaking in Ephesians 4.27. He said, giving no place to the devil. So when you go back to fornication, when you go back to alcoholism, when you go back to lying, you now give demons opportunity to come and manipulate your life. So there are patterns. Are you following this? But those patterns also are dealt with the day you become aware that you have authority over devils. So what do you do? Submit yourself to the law of the spirit of life and exercise your authority in the name of Jesus. But for you to walk with the consciousness that, oh, you are in bondage, there are foundations because of your ancestors, because of this, you are in trouble. No matter the number of times you are delivered, you can never be delivered until you come into the revelation of who you are in Christ Jesus. For me, I was praying and I had an encounter. Four creatures, two creatures appeared in my room. One had ten horns. The other one looked like a corpse that was exhumed from the grave. And as they stood, the Holy Ghost began to talk to me. He said, these are the spirits that control the destiny of people in your father's house. And he showed me where they get their power from. He said, alcoholism, womanizing, lying, and pride. He said, if you allow your soul to operate by these systems, you will give them power in your life. So what do I do? I shut myself away from those things. That's how the law of life works, is to walk by being spiritually minded. So I'm not mindful of pride. I'm not mindful of lying. I'm not mindful of womanizing. I'm not mindful of alcoholism. So long as my spirit stays spiritual, even if they move in my room, they can't attack me. They can't touch me. So my goal now is not going from place to place and say, oh, deal with this foundation, deal with that foundation. No. My goal now is to focus on who I've become in Christ. I'm a new creation. I'm born of God. I've overcome the world. I'm no longer a slave of sin. And as I sustain that consciousness, all of those things can be there. It can't hurt me. It can't affect me. Ministry will keep going from glory to glory. Some people looked at me and said, ah, you are the first preacher in your family. It will take like three generations. I say, you don't know how many generations I have. I have the generation of the Father. I have the generation of the Son. I have the generation of the Holy Ghost. I am ancient, brother. I came from an ancestry of the Godhead. <laughs> from an ancestry, ancient one. You are the one who thinks I started from. There is an old generation. Because I'm a new creation. Are you following? So what do you do? Shut the door of your soul. Don't allow any demonic pattern. Authorize a demon. And then, walk in the consciousness of who you are. There's no foundation killing you. You have gone beyond them. The old man was crucified. You are a new man in Christ Jesus. Behold, all things are passed away. Even if you will pray against those things, this is the revelation you must have to have victory. 
If you don't have this revelation, if you like, fast for four years. If God helps you, he will save you from ulcer. Otherwise, you will fast into chronic ulcer and have a challenge. And the devil will come and tell you again that it's because you tried to break free. That's why I brought this one. If you try again, I will bring madness. Your bondage will become bigger. <laughs> you know what the Bible said? Ah, in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14, it said, for as much then as the children were partakers of flesh and blood, he said himself likewise took part of the same, that he through death might deliver them who for a lifetime were subject to bondage through the fear of death, even the devil. So there is a victory that God has procured for you. There's no record against you, sir. You see, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them by the cross. And he said, he, every handwriting of ordinance, those are legalities that was against you. He nailed it to the cross. So when something, when I'm seeing a pattern, I stand up and say, no, this is not consistent with me. Christ has nailed it to the cross. In the name of Jesus, stop. It will stop. But if I don't have that revelation, I'll go and be begging God. Oh Lord, come and end this pattern. Oh Lord, come and break. And God is saying, I did that more than 2,000 years ago. Go back to the scripture and become aware. It's done. It's the day you become aware that you take authority. And say, ah, I didn't know before. Now I know. So for every month that you stagnated me, I enter into 10 times speed. That's why some of us are moving on very high speed. Because what I'm doing now is, it's not even the delay that the devil delayed me. All my family members that he delayed, he's paying for them. And I'm walking in a new frequency. Come on, give the Lord the shout. God is what? Omni benevolent. That means God loves you unconditionally. He said in John 3 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In Romans 8.32, he said, If he did not withhold his only son, but gave him freely for us, how shall he not with him give us all things? Again, many don't know that God is only benevolent. So when they are asking God for things, they ask God for things that they believe a good man should be able to do. In fact, those who are able to even ask God for things tangible, are those that have seen their parents show them love. And so there are many Christians today who don't dare ask God for the best. In fact, when God gives them the best, they think it's a mistake. They think somebody else deserves it more. They think they are not qualified for the best. And so when they are asking God for things, they are careful to ask God for the least things. And they think it's piety. They think it's humility. It's actually a lack of revelation of the unconditional love of God. There are many people today, they are bold to make declarations in God when they have fasted. When they are coming from the mountain, after 14 days, they are moving like anything they say, heaven will give them. All their words become commandments. But when they don't do anything, they feel they don't deserve anything. So in their interaction with God, they believe they should only get what they deserve. Trust me, if you were to get what you deserve, it's death and condemnation. So why consecration is important? And I've taught you several times. You must know that everything God is giving to you is not about you. It's about him. It's about his unconditional love. And so if through Christ, he has given you the opportunity to ask. Bro, ask for the best. Don't come before God and say, Lord, sustain us. Lord, help us. No. Manda, pero, savaka. When some of us come. Father, give us this generation. Make us a voice to the nations. Lord, <laughs> if you gave Jesus everything that my destiny requires, I receive them now, not tomorrow, now. Your will and you are able to give now. See, that's what informs the quality of your life. There are some people that if they enjoy the two blessings, they say, Kai, I beg, God has been too faithful. I don't even deserve this one. No. I beg, I beg, I beg. Lord, thank you for this one that I have done. See, thank him for what he has done, but there's more. He said, ask, you shall receive. He's inviting you to ask. And he said, if you, are, if you have exhausted all you know, he said, seek, you will find. Even the ones you don't know, I'm ready to give you. And he said, in case you have found it and you don't have it, knock, insist, place demand. You know what he said in Jeremiah 33 verse 3? He said, ask of me, I will answer. When I'm done answering, I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of.